Hey guys, today I'm going to tell you about a woman and I have the text messages with her actual phone number and her boyfriend's phone number at the time. And she had sold over half a million dollars of fake magic cards to Houston local stores, which then went on to sell to the customers. This started in 2015. She actually came to my store because she realized, hey, there's a new magic store within five hours of me. I'm going to drive to that store and I'm going to go ahead and try to sell fake magic cards. Now, what caught my attention was this has been a story for some time. It goes like this. I broke up with my boyfriend. My boyfriend spent too much money on these magic cards that I don't know very much about. What can you offer me? The store owner or the manager at the time would get really greedy and look at all these cards, which were fake, but very difficult to tell. And then they would lowball and offer 10%. And then, of course, he would say yes. Now, it is the same person who I told Pico Trade about. And they she traded many, many fake cards on Pico Trade. A ton of them. Hundreds of thousands of dollars of dual lands, power nine, to casual players who, in my opinion, still do not know that they are fake. Even if someone caught her, the moderator would just refund everyone to Pico Point. So I was going to break this story, and I broke the story first by mistake on the Magic Houston Facebook page. That was a mistake. And the reason was, obviously, stores. If you go to the, any local Facebook Magic page, you know it'll be people posting events, people posting sales, and, hey, I'm new, where can I play? People did not take this very well. And there was a backlash. People were doxing me. Doxing doesn't matter to me very much now, but in 2015, it did. It mattered a whole lot to me back then. But now it's like whatever. I mean, obviously doxing people is bad and it is illegal. But I had a different perspective. I'm a lot more, I guess my scales are a lot harder now than they used to be. But they frightened me. Um, they actually sent someone to my home with a baseball bat. Um, at that time, it was an apartment and said, hey, don't tell anyone about this. And I have that on film as well which I did give it to the police so fascinatingly enough this person is still doing it uh, and she will go to any new store um, check it out become a regular for a few days her boyfriend will go ahead almost like casing the store play a few FNMs play a few pre-releases trade a few real cards in and figure out where the weakness of the store is i.e. what employee doesn't really understand magic. I mean, some store employees, they can they know comics well, they know. And of course, when they're told not to buy something they don't understand, but the deal is really good, and hey, this person is going to go to the next store and sell these maybe real cards. At this point, you know, it's just a sob story then yeah, you, you take a risk. It's 10%. What's a few hundred dollars if you can make, if it's, the collection's worth 20000 then $1,000 isn't really that much, right? If it's a real collection. So it's the same person. She's been doing this for a long time and I was able to voice record her. Um, and, you know, we had security cameras, of course, because I live in a semi-dangerous part of town. It turns out that, you know, I asked her, you know, what stores. I've always wanted to pinpoint these store names. I had a sneaking suspicion that there were stores in Houston who purchased this type of merchandise. I know there was one in the mall, and I'm only going to speak about the one in the Darebrook Mall because it's no longer in business. They would take counterfeit anime figures, counterfeit magic cards, counterfeit video games, and it's hard. I mean, it's hard to find someone who has expertise in whatever you're carrying. But she would sell on a consistent basis to 
one or more of the employees, and she would go about and say, "Hey, this is you know how I would do it." And the reason she was telling me this was I caught her, and I said, "I would like the name of the stores." I also learned that there was a store very close. The My F and M did it as well. My F and M, there was a guy.、Um, the guy was not a very good employee, in my opinion, and the female was attractive, and she would always sell cards to him, and he would pay ridiculous sums of money. Now, add to the fact that the cards are now fake. So her and Her boyfriend CJ is a pro Magic player. I actually know who he is. CJ is not his real name. And they make a living from doing this. They make a living from selling fake Magic cards. Now, a lot of you will say, "Oh, well, you know." In this ad, she's posted it as a proxy. The ad changed, right? Once I had a meeting with her, and I have. There's certain things I want to disclose, but I have to think about how carefully I need to disclose them. There's store owners, there's players at stake, grinders. There's, I, I mean, it's all a big. She flooded the Houston market with at least half a million dollars of fake Magic cards since 19, since 2015. And any goif,、um, I would say half the goifs in Houston are fake. Half the dark confidants in Houston are fake. Half the vanilla and clicks are fake. She's been doing this since 2015 and has never stopped, never、uh, given an inch. And I think it's time to stop her. So I am making a separate video, a documentary style video, because I do have videotape and things of that nature. It's fascinating because there are two stores on that list that she mentioned. That I have a recording of, and she gave me exact numbers and the, what she believed were the first name of the employees. Yeah, I I would never have guessed. These are not small entities here we're talking about. These are either they were tricked or they knew and they thought just thought better of it and they just just wanted to make money. Uh, she would go to these new stores, offer them a deal. Well, first of all, she would try to sell them as if they were real. Once she gets caught, because she had been caught many times by these stores, and little action was taken. I understand why. The Houston Magic Facebook group did not take action on this. I gave them the names. I gave them the phone numbers. I had to delete the post because of all the angry people. And I realized those angry people. I now realize those angry people, because when you publish someone's phone number and you can tie them, so a trick that you want to use for a background check, like a preliminary background check, obviously do a real one, is you can type someone's phone number into Facebook, and if they register that phone number, which in this case they did, you can track them down to a Facebook page,、uh, you know, a, a Facebook personal page, and you can confirm who the person is. So I confirmed the Magic Pro, her boyfriend, and then herself as well. It's the same person we see here. The name has changed a little bit. I think they got married, but man, it's so fascinating because the backlash at the time in 2015, where they're sending people to actually threaten me with physical harm, was tremendous in the Magic community, and that's the day I lost faith. Like. There has to be a point where I stop opening packs and we stop doing MTG finance. I'm get a little more dragon-like, and I realize that hey, not everyone here is all lovey dove. Not everyone's here's interest is to promote the game, or that there are people with ill intention. So remember, I grew up with the game. I unlike Tolarian. I unlike Wedge. Grew up with a play group most of my life. My play group in elementary school—they were my elementary. They were my classmates in my middle school, and so on. I had a Wizard of the Coast store in my mall, an actual Wizard of the Coast store. Back when we had those, I loved Magic, and I felt like one of the most th special things about Magic was: hey, if I needed to borrow a deck, you would let me borrow a deck, and you wouldn't worry about me stealing stuff because 
we're both magic players. We don't need to be friends. We don't not need to like each other, but we are in this together. One good example was um, Daniel Chang from Vintage Magic. Uh, he came over, um, and I actually met him at the hotel. He showed some artwork. It'll probably be a video on his channel. Um, I made a few videos too, but I'm waiting for the AOK -okay because there's some numbers that I'm pretty sure he doesn't want to get out unless his video confirms those numbers. But yeah, I played with one of his decks and it had Power 9. It had um, the cards. And yeah, you check to make sure that you're not missing a card, but that's what Magic was. It doesn't matter if you have the most expensive deck at your lunch table. If someone wants to run it and you're bored, you trade decks. Not to keep, but to run. And whatever cards, hey, you need an extra die. I remember one of my, um, the people I really disliked, but we were all magic players. They needed a diabolic edic, which was a common from Tempest, a very good common, nonetheless, but a common. And I would just be like, hey, take it. You know, I found it. And I, went, I, I took two hours to find it because my card collection was not sort. Again, I'm in like sixth grade, right? So like shorting abilities is not very high. This was the first time that my attitude really changed towards magic, the magic community. Many people say, oh, well, you know, you're blah, 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 and we don't like you. And it's all new people. If you're old school and you understand that when you lend out a deck, you lend it out because even though you might not know that person very well, you expect to get it back. That's why you lend out the deck. If people cards were going missing, then you would stop lending out decks. People stop lending out decks now. And that really is a shame because now everyone has to buy different decks. When instead, hey, you're bored at playing the same deck F and M for five times in a row. Oh, let's change decks. They don't do that anymore. And the whole proxy argument about, oh, I want a proxy to play. Yeah, I think in my opinion, I'm personally okay with it. Legally, that's another issue. Whether or not you should do it ethically, that's another issue for you to decide. But when you want to sell magic cards at the volume they are selling at a business, they drive they drive a Maserati. That's what she drove to my card shop. She's making a lot of money. And her pro magic player bro boyfriend is making a lot of money by cheating the ordinary magic players. Because one day that magic player with that Black Lotus or that dual land is going to want to sell it. And they're going to realize, oh my goodness, I bought a fake from all that time ago. And it's not their fault. I don't blame the person for buying a fake as a real. Um, maybe they can be more careful. Maybe they are a victim. They are a victim. Here you have a person who acknowledges, who acknowledges, if you were to not know they're, they're fake, it's illegal. If you were not to know they're fake, it's illegal, but you know, and they have been played and sold at shops, it's best to just play them, but they can be sold too, as well as, as well, but you're right, there's always a risk. So on text message, and I showed her this in person when she recently came to visit my store to sell me fake magic cards. And how did I know it was the same person? I called a number. And I knew it. I knew it because I just had that gut feeling because I heard the story so many times of my boyfriend dumped me and he spent so much money on magic cards and... Here's my Maserati out in front. It's such a unique story to Houston that every store owner in Houston has probably seen that Maserati at least recently. And it's not cool. And that's why that's that's the point in time where I thought, hmm, maybe there are people who I don't know, content creators who don't actually play the game of magic, maybe they don't own decks of magic and they don't I mean, one of the concerns I have is there's so many deck techs. And back in the olden days, your deck tech would be you making with physical cards, right? That's how you did your deck tech. That's how I did my old deck techs. 
Nowadays, it's like copy and paste images in a green screen and it looks fancier. But there's no way to know that person actually owns the deck or has played the deck. So they're telling you that this is the best deck and how the deck works and you know what interactions the deck has. And it all sounds good on paper, but they don't own the deck. They've never played the deck. Some people will accuse me that I don't play, you know, I don't play magic. All you have to do is go look on my Facebook page. That's all you have to do. Like YouTube, it's hard to play magic on YouTube. It's hard to do gameplay. Magic Online sucked, okay? We can all say that it sucked. Uh, magic Arena is a little bit better. Um, it's harder to get cards, and it's really hard to be excited by playing a unoptimized deck, in my opinion. Um, it's in my So the way I play is I play up to my opponent. If my opponent is really good, then I'll play better. But if I can make mistakes and stuff, I don't see the point of not making mistakes because I'll still... There's no point in not doing it. It's the power level of the cards dictate how you play. Right? So, like, obviously, if I play Rakdos Tempo and there's nobody in the GPs that play or the Magic Fest playing Rakdos Tempo, it's not like I <laughs> am playing going to play that well. So, one of the criticisms I always have on MTG Finance that Rudy does not, uh, you know, I think Rudy is different. Rudy is different because he shows his collection. He show he talks the talk and he walks the walk. But a lot of people will say, I bought 100 moats. No picture. Fantastic. Or they will say, hey, I bought out this card or that card. No picture. No proof. No evidence. They just want those Reddit upvotes. And I come from a style, you got to prove it to me. Show me your collection. If you have this, if you have the deck, then why are you so afraid? I mean, you don't need to make a YouTube video, but you can put it on Facebook. I put my stuff on Facebook. And you can show that, hey, you own this collection. This collection came in. I mean, my opinion is a lot of people who are tr making money either from Patreons or donations or whatever they're doing. Like, you know, like medical emergencies, weds. They actually don't want this game to be healthy. Um, they will attack PewDiePie. They will attack other content creators who actually play the game. It's quite simple. You either have, you either play Magic or you do not. A lot of those people are, that are being promoted today remind me a lot of this issue. Um, this issue is very, very simple. I don't believe these people play Magic the Gathering. They take advantage of Magic players. And maybe they don't know exactly what doing they are doing at the time is illegal. But a lot of them do. Um, a lot of them do know that they are going to... They're, they're stealing money away. The same with Alex. Uh, one of the things that a lot of people say about Alex is he's the nicest guy. Yet he cheats and cheats and cheats. There's no other way to define what he's doing except he's stealing from the Magic the Gathering player base. How else can you... I mean, how else can you phrase it? Like, is there a better way to say that he's helping the community, that he's helping judges catch himself? Like, oh, of course Alex was cheating because he had to train the judges. That's what the plan was all along. He was going to become the greatest cheater in Magic history. So, so a lot of times i'm i believe uh, from an old school player perspective from someone who does love this game that people are looking to harm the game and they hide behind um, a lot of a lot of social justice right uh, that's the best way i can put it they hide behind that and they use it as a shield and as a sword to hit people like me and to troll me and at the same time they're selling half a million dollars of fake magic cards and driving a Maserati. When I posted this up with this phone number, with the phone two phone numbers and a picture of their Facebook, 
I thought that people would clap and say, oh, great, you caught them. You have evidence. They didn't do that. They didn't even come close to doing that. Well, anyway, so if you're interested in subscribing to a less drama tra channel about my business life, we are currently making daily vlogs you gotta finish i have to finish my taxes it's almost done i gotta get my cpa to check a few things but after that we are going to do vlogs about startup life and part of that startup life is our magic shop so i'm sure that you guys are interested to know what uh norman and jess and the rest of the team is working on but uh, it should be pretty good it's kind of like the office but it's called the startup anyway bye guys <laughs>